Uh, good evening, everyone. Today we will have a presentation on uh, the. I'm sorry, just a second. Good evening, everyone. Today we will have a talk, a presentation about the spine degenerative disc disease. Uh, and the post-operative complications and what the radiologist should know. Uh, because the presentation is uh, very important to our daily practice for any radiologists who work with uh, MRI, and uh, I think that we all agree that the vast majority of the MRI exams are uh, lumbar and cervical uh, spine MRI, and the by far the most common findings are degenerative disc diseases so it's a little bit uh, detailed presentation i thought it's better to be given in two separate separate uh, sections uh, today we will have the we will present the part one uh, which is about the non-operated spine patient who did not have an operation uh, and he's coming for a, a, a complaint of any spinal uh, abnormality. So we will talk about the spine that with no operation, بدون عملية, مام سوي أي عملية. And uh, tomorrow, inshallah, uh, at the same time, we will continue with the operated spine. Okay, the post-operative spine, and what should we look for? So uh, let's start now with the. Uh, our presentation today we will talk about the following topics first we'll have a brief overview about the anatomy of the spine uh, the spinal degenerative changes terminology of disc herniation and this is in red because it is a very uh, important thing that we should all know about the different terms and what do they mean okay tomorrow inshallah uh, we will proceed with the post-operative spine uh, and the findings in post-operative spine. Basic knowledge is that the parts of the spine that are more susceptible or most commonly in, uh, involved in the degenerative disc disease are three parts. These are the spine, the spine, I'm trying to mute, but you have to help me also. So, uh, the parts of the spine that are uh, more commonly involved uh, or the most commonly involved in uh, degenerative disc disease include the cervical spine. Uh, the thoracic or the dorsal spine and the lumbar spine. So, little bit of very simple anatomy of the spinal cord. As we all know, the spinal cord composed of both gray and white matter, and it is the opposite of the the distribution is opposite to that that we will see in the brain. Uh, in that the gray matter is the center of it, while the white matter is the peripheral part of it. Okay. In the brain, we have uh, the uh, gray matter is on the outer part of the brain, on the cortex, and the white matter is in the central part of the brain, while uh, in the spine, it is the opposite. We have the gray matter and the, uh, in the center and the white matter on the, uh, in the peripheral part. And uh, the gray matter is composed of anterior and the posterior horns or ventral or dorsal horns, and uh, the uh, nerve roots uh, exit from both these horns. The dorsal nerve roots have a spinal ganglion and the ventral nerve roots, they do not have, or they do not have any spinal ganglion and they both need to form the spinal nerve. So this is just a simple introduction to the anatomy of the spinal cord. Regarding the anatomy of the uh, lumbar spine, uh, what's different here is that we do not have any spinal cord in the lumbar spine. As we all know, the lumbar spine ends at about the level of L1 or maybe L1-2 intervertebral disc in, 
uh, in the lumbar spine in adult patients, usually in pediatric age group, the uh, cauda equina is at a little bit lower position, can be found at the vertebral body, okay? Uh, the cord equina usually can be found at L2 in pediatric age group, while in adult uh, age group, which the one which is the age group that we are interested in in degenerative disc diseases, it's found at uh, the level of L2, maybe L1-2 intervertebral disc. And from the uh, cord equina, we have uh, from the conus medullaris, we have the cord equina, which are multiple nerve roots just exiting and contained within the fecal sac, and they exit through the intervertebral foramina on the right and left side, you can see here. Uh, the thing that we need to know is that when we have this is the L3 and then the L4, the L3, L4 uh, level, their, uh, their exit nerve root is the L4 nerve root. Okay, so when you have L4, 5, the nerve root will be L5. The L3, 4, the nerve root will be L4. L1, 2, the nerve root will be L2. This is in the dorsal and lumbar vertebra. It is not the condition in the cervical uh, levels. In the cervical lo levels, uh, it is the level of the upper, yani C3, 4, the nerve root, the C3. Uh, okay? So just uh, the level of the, uh, in the dorsal and lumbar vertebra, we have the nerve root corresponds to the level below. Okay, to the level below, while in the cervical uh, vertebrae, the nerve root is corresponding to the level above. Okay, and again, if you can, please mute yourselves because uh, the sound will be much more clearer. Thank you. This is uh, uh, an illustration of the intervertebral disc. The importance of the intervertebral discs is that they are the spinal shock absorbers, they absorb the different trauma and different forces uh, on the spine and make the mobility of the spine much, much more easier. So this is a healthy disc. The healthy disc co composed of a central part called the nucleus pulposus, which is in young age group, it's hydrated and it's elastic, okay? And it's surrounded by fibrous tissue called the annulus fibrosus, which is composed of lamellae as you can see here. And this is the gross anatomical section. You can see the nucleus pulposus in the center, and it is a well-hydrated cartilage surrounded by annulus fibrosus. Uh, this is also a diagram showing the anatomy of the intervertebral disc. As we said, the nucleus pulposus is in the center, and it is the hydrated part surrounded by lamellae of uh, annulus fibrosus. And you can see, uh, this is the posterior part, the neural arch. You can see the this is the facet joint composed of, for example, here, L5 uh, facet and L4, L5, L4. And this is the lamina. Here is the spinal canal containing the fecal sac. And in the fecal sac, what you usually see is that the this is uh, L4, 5, intervertebral disc so the nerve that is exited from the uh, fecal sac is the l5 nerve, nerve root that will exit from the intervertebral foramen here okay and uh, the uh, fecal sac contains the uh, nerve roots of the lower level arranged in this order from anterior to posterior like for example here s1 s2 s3 s4 and so on at the end, we will have some uh, time for discussion and uh, uh, multiple uh, and uh, questions. So if we can wait till the end, please. So this is uh, an MRI of the cervical spine, the sagittal images. We will see some uh, cuts uh, adjacent to each other. And we will try to explain what is apparent in every uh, cut. And this is at exactly the midline showing the uh, vertebral bodies with the intervertebral discs and you can see here the uh, intervertebral disc uh, composed of peripheral low density uh, per, uh, annulus uh, fibrosus and a central high density uh, sorry high intensity i'm sorry uh, nucleus pulposus it's high intensity on t2 weighted images because it is hydrated it contains water, and the water appears as a high signal intensity on T2-weighted images. 
here is the spinal canal containing the white thing here the high intensity t2 thing here which is the cnf and within it is the spinal cord coming from the brain stem here in the brain this is the spinal cord and here at the midline exactly you can see the spinal processes of the cervical vertebrae if we go just a little bit to the uh, left side you can see the spinal processes becomes uh, more obvious a uh, little bit and then as we go more and more laterally you can see that here will be the uh, intervertebral foramina with the exit nerve roots uh, well seen and the most lateral aspect you can see the facet joints here so if we assume that this is a c2 this is the facet joint of c23 okay we will explain it even more in the lumbar spine part and uh, on the other side if we go we have the same changes you can see the nerve root exiting here from the intervertebral foramen at this level on this level on this level and you can see the uh, uh, facet uh, joints between the cervical vertebrae in the axial images if we move in the axial images we will see here this is the intervertebral this is the level at c2 3 level this is the C2-3 level, and we can see the intervertebral uh, disc here with posterior to it is the posterior arch composed of the spinous process and the lamina, and later we will see the pedicles. In the center is the spinal cord surrounded by CSF in the uh, fecal sac, in the dural sac. If we go a little bit down, not, not, nothing much has changed, and at, this is at another level at c3 4 level we can see almost the same changes and you can see here the uh, intervertebral foramen with the nerve root just exiting through it and you can see the nerve root here is intact it's uh, very well seen and it's separated from the adjacent structures this is a part at within the uh, vertebral body okay and you can see the vertebral pedicle on the right and on the left side with the uh, fecal sac here. Just a second, uh, admit. Okay, thank you very much for the. Okay, so now let's see. Again, uh, at little, this is at the level of the uh, vertebral end plate. Here you can see at the vertebral plate of C234, uh, C4 uh, vertebral body, and this is the, just the beginning of the intervertebral disc, okay? And you can see the spinal cord here, and this is the intervertebral foramen uh, uh, containing the nerve root, the exiting nerve root. Okay, now. Again, at the intervertebral disc, you can see the same things that we talked about. And this is the end plate of the adjacent vertebra. Now, let's go to the uh, lumbar levels. Okay, let's go to the lumbar the spine. At the midline, we can see the vertebral bodies separated by the discs and here since the lumbar spine is mobile uh, and uh, has you know, a lot of the weight of the body of the human body is concentrated on the uh, lumbar spine so the discs are bigger thicker than the lumbar spine guys can you please uh, mute uh, the sound if you can please grateful anybody who has uh, not muted please mute I don't know how to mute all so you can you have to help me anyway so at the lumbar spine we can see that uh, the vertebral the vertebral disc uh, yeah, the sound is coming from, but I appreciate if you help me add it yourself. Dr. Ahmed, the sound is not coming from. I don't know how. This is the problem. I really don't know how. 
Hey, I'm, I'm saying, please, please mute all, mute all. But I don't know who's. Can you please mute yourself? I don't know. Let me see if I can do something here. Okay, now I think it's better. So let's continue. The disc, the intervertebral discs, again uh, composed of uh, annulus, uh, annulus fibrosus, the hypointense part, the peripheral, and the nucleus pulposus, the central hyperintense part. This is T2 weighted image because it con the uh, nucleus pulposus is hyperintense, is white because it contains water. It's hydrated. Okay. Now, yes. if we go a little bit to the left side, we will start to see the nerve contained within the fecal sac. Again, we can see the nerve roots starting to exit from the intervertebral foramen. You can see this is the intervertebral foramen and this is the intervertebral foramen with nerve roots exiting at each level. Okay, and here you can see the vertebral pedicles this one and this one and the vertebral pedicles and the beginning of the spinous process of the uh, lumbar vertebrae and the facet joint is the joint between each two vertebral levels okay just let me admit some of the people here uh, okay now Again, more laterally, we can see the nerve root within the intervertebral foramen, here and here, the intervertebral foramen, and the facet joints that uh, limit the intervertebral foramen posteriorly. As you can see, this is the L5 and this is the L4, okay? Look carefully here. The facet joint composed from both L4 and L5, part of the L5 and part of the L4, يعني قسم جزء من ال L4 وجزء من ال L5. So what we need to know is that the part that is closer huh, is the part that belongs to the L5, while the, the part that is away is the part that belongs to the L4. Yani if we go to the axial, axial image, this part, the part that's away is uh, or belongs to what? To the L4, while the part that is towards the uh, vertebral body or towards the disc is the part that it belongs to L5, if, we, if this is an L4-5 level, okay? So, this we have to know, which part is, yeah, the part that is away belongs to the vertebra above, and the part that is uh, towards the intervertebral disc belongs to the vertebra below, okay? I hope it's clear. Now, again, on the other side, you can see the lateral aspect, this is the facet joint composed of the part that is uh, more posterior is belongs to the L4 and parts that's more anterior belongs to the L5 and in between them the exit foramen containing the nerve root. Now, let's see the axial images. The axial images, this is a cut at the uh, L4-5 intervertebral disc showing the fecal sac here. Um, I don't know what to... I'm trying my best Sorry, Annie, if this is something wrong with the uh, software, but uh, this is the best I can do. So I'll try to be slower. Maybe the sound is uh, comes with the uh, slices. I'm sorry if there is any inconvenience. So this is the intervertebral disc, and this is the fecal sac containing the nerve roots here and here. Okay, and you can see the facet joint here and here. Okay, the facet joint on the right side, on, on the left side, the part that is closer to the vertebral body is the part of the vertebra below. Yani this is the part belongs to the L5. Okay, while the part that is away from the vertebral body is part belongs to the vertebra above. So this is this belongs to L4. Yani this is the spinous process of L4, while this is the facet. Uh, process of L5. Now, again, another cut. 
and we can see here this is the intervertebral foramen, uh, intervertebral disc, I'm sorry, very well seen. And you can see this is the hypointense part composed of the nerve uh, of the fibers of the fibrous tissue this is the annulus fibrosus and in the center this is the hyper intense part contains the nucleus pulposus which is in this patient he's young and his uh, the discs are uh, healthy and well hydrated okay so you can see it uh, يعني, uh, hyper intense on t2 short على t2 okay this is the cut at the level of the end plate of L4, uh, L5, sorry, end plate of L5. And you can see the nerve roots here are arranged, as we said, from anterior to posterior. This is the S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, and so on. Okay? A cut within the vertebral body of L5. You can see here, this is the iliac bones, and here somewhere will be the sacroiliac joint. And you can see this is the uh, L5 uh, vertebral body containing the fecal sac with the nerve roots. Now, what are the criteria or the indications for ordering an MRI of the spine? No definite criteria exists. No definitive criteria. But some indicators are failure to respond to treatment, patient is on treatment and is not getting better. If we need a more accurate or more specific diagnosis, documentation of subtle injury, injury that is not very well seen by other modalities like X-ray, for example, detection of subtle pathology, and if there is an emergency situation that requires evaluation, uh, for example, uh, fall from height or a traffic accident or anything like that. So, regarding the pain generation in patients with degenerative disc disease, Maria and the degenerative disc disease, some old guy with back pain, from where the pain, from where does it arise? It arises either from compression of the nerve roots, the neural compression, or if there is chemical irritation of the nerves, if there is osseous abnormalities compressing the nerves, if there is segmental instability, like anterolysthesis, retrolysthesis, the spondylolysthesis group, or if there is spinal canal stenosis. So, what are the symptoms that are related to the, uh, uh, the neurogenic pain? The symptoms are either neurogenic claudication, radicular pain, and this is pain in a very specific distribution, distribution in a dermatome, like L1 dermatome, L2 dermatome, special, uh, specific area pain, let's say, code equina syndrome, weakness, sensory abnormalities, and back pain in general. These are the symptoms that are related to degenerative disc disease. Let's start with the central stenosis or the spinal canal stenosis. The presentation is variable. Most classic presentation is uh, neurogenic claudication, okay? Neurogenic claudication. Uh, some may only have back pain, just complaining of back of the pain, and rarely can be painless progressive weakness. The patient has progressive weakness without back pain. All of these are symptoms of spinal or central spinal canal stenosis. You can see here, this is the spinal canal and it is a very narrow canal. There are a lot of measurements of the spinal canal and which level should be considered stenosis and which part uh, considered not. Some people say up to 10 millimeters, some say up to 11, some say up to 12. So uh, there are a lot of measurements. I will not go into the details of that. We will talk only about the spinal canal stenosis in absolute terms. So. The lateral recess stenosis, if there's stenosis at the lateral part of the fecal sac, the lateral recess stenosis also can produce claudication, radicular pain, weakness, but this is rare, and it can be acute or can be chronic. For example, if we measure here the spinal canal, you can see it is of good anterior posterior diameter. So it will not be considered as central spinal stenosis, but there is marked narrowing of the lateral recess causing 
lateral spinal canal stenosis or lateral recess stenosis. Now, regarding the disc herniation, it's something that we should be aware of and we should report and we should look for, for carefully is the foraminal disc herniation. Foraminal disc herniation is important because the exit foramen, the intervertebral foramen, it's a very small space that is surrounded by bone all over. So everywhere there is bone and the nerve is in the center of it. So if there is anything that narrows this foramen even more, this will result in compression of the nerve root and will result in pain. Okay, so the foraminal disc, even if it's a small, can be symptomatic and it will produce root symptoms, radiculopathy, mostly unilateral. There is no claudication and it can be acute or chronic. You can see here, this is a T1 uh, weighted, these are T1 weighted images and you can see uh, the different uh, severities of the foraminal uh, disc herniation. This is a small foraminal disc, compare this exit foramen with the nerve root very clearly seen surrounded by fat with this one it is effaced here and this is even more compared with the one above this is very clearly seen nerve root while the, the one down it's compressed and not very well seen and this is a severe foraminal disc herniation causing almost obliteration of the exit foramen now regarding cervical radiculopathy these are the ter dermatomes that we see uh, in uh, exit nerve, uh, in the nerve root compression, each nerve root has its own specific distribution and dermatome. And this, uh, when uh, this nerve root is compressed, it will produce pain in this part of the body, in this dermatome. Now, regarding the lumbosacral radiculopathy, or what's called the sciatica, sciatica. We have the L4, L5, and S1 in these dermatomes, this part of the uh, lower limb that will be affected by the pain. And we should not hear that if a disc is herniated, for example, at L4, 5 level, it may impinge at L4 or L5 nerve roots. There are some anatomical variations. I will not go into that, but it might produce symptoms at L4 or L5 nerve roots or dermatomes. Now, the degenerative spinal disease, what are the changes that we expect to see in patients with degenerative spinal disease? We can see bone marrow changes, osseous changes, ligamentous pathology, ligamentous changes. We can see spondylolisthesis or anterolisthesis, retrolisthesis, spinal canal stenosis, and we can see cord pathology, spinal cord pathology. And at the end, we will talk about the disc lesions, the disc uh, herniation. First of all, the degenerative changes are modic changes. They are called or termed modic changes. So what are the modic changes? We, as we all know, there are three types of modic changes. Modic type 1, modic type 2, and modic type 3. Modic type 1, it is edema. There will be edema at the adjacent vertebral end plates. So when you see T1 images, T2 images, as we know, the fluid, the edema, the water, is hypo-intense on T1, hyper-intense on T2. So when we see hypo, hyper, this indicates edema, indicating modic type 1 changes. Now, modic type 2 changes is when fat infiltration happens. You can see here, this is fat we know. It's hyper-intense on T1 and hyper-intense on T2 weighted images. So this is hyper-intense on T1 and hyperintense on T2. This is at the vertebral end plate adjacent to the disc, not to the disc, the end plate close to the disc. Hyperintense, hyperintense means fat, which means modic type 2 changes. Okay, now, modic type 3 is when there is sclerosis. Okay, sclerosis means hypointense on T1, hypointense on T2. So there is hypo, hypo. When you see these changes, hypointense on T1 and hypointense on T2, this indicates sclerosis and this indicates modic type 3 changes. What about the osseous changes that we talk about? Osteous changes is either in two forms, either osteophytes or osteoarthritis. Osteophytes can be anterior, which is by far the most common. Very commonly we see anterior osteophytes in symptomatic and asymptomatic patients. In everyone with aging, 
we see osteophytes anteriorly. Posterior osteophytes, these are the important ones because they compress the spinal canal, they narrow the spinal canal, they cause compression of the spinal canal. So the posterior osteophytes are the ones that we should be looking for. For example, in this case, you can see there is a severe spinal canal stenosis compressing the spinal cord on multiple vertebral levels. The spinal cord is very compressed and the CSF around it is lost in these levels. And you can see in the axial images, there is a big uh, disc and osteophyte compressing the spinal canal. And with the CT scan, you can see the ossification here indicating what's called OPLL or ossification of the posterior longitudinal ligament. Okay, so this is cervical spondylotic myelopathy, and it is the most common cause of non-traumatic paraparesis and tetraparesis. Usually when we have a disc, or in many situations when we have a disc, there will be adjacent osteophytes, posterior osteophytes, and this is called disc osteophyte complex. For example, you can see here this is the disc, and there, is, there are very small posterior osteophytes here and here. This is called disc osteophyte complex, and it's uh, the osteophyte part is better seen with CT scan, better than MRI. And you can see this disc herniation here at C5, 6 level, compressing the spinal cord. And here, okay. Now, let's talk a little bit about the facet joint disease or facet arthropathy. As we said, the facet uh, joint composed of facet, uh, facets from the vertebra above and the vertebra below articulating with each other in forming a synovial joint. Synovial joint means it contains cartilage and contains synovial fluid. So, this joint is moving. It's prone to osteoarthritis. With excessive movement, with time, with aging, there will be osteoarthritis. And this osseous overgrowth, the osseous overgrowth, the osteophytosis and the osteoarthritis, will result in the following will cause neural foraminal narrowing. The nerve, the exit foramen will be narrow and the nerve will be compressed because there is osteophyte narrowing the foramen. Can cause central canal stenosis. Can, since there is a, a synovial uh, joint, contains synovial fluid and synovial membrane, there will be associated facet synovial cysts and degenerative disc disease. The facet synovial cyst will narrow the spinal canal even more. We will see multiple examples in the coming slides. First, let's see. This is uh, the, uh, the level of L4-5 intervertebral disc, and we can see here this is the facet joint. So, if we look carefully, this part, this is L4-5, this part belongs to the L4 vertebra, while this part belongs to the L5 vertebra. This is L5 and this is L4. And in between them is the facet joint and you can see here the hypo-intense signal. This is a T1 weighted image and the hypo-intense signal is due to sclerosis because of the osteoarthritis and the osteophytosis. You can see the osteophyte bulging here and bulging here. Osteophyte just like you see os osteoarthritis of the knee joint for example. You see osteophytes. The same thing you see here. Osteophytes narrowing the spinal canal, narrowing the exit foramen, compressing the nerve root here. The nerve root has no place to go. From anteriorly is the vertebral uh, body, bone, and posteriorly is the facet joint, which is also bone. This is a post-contrast image. You can see there's something here. We are not sure what is it, what it is, and it has some uh, mild post-contrast enhancement. And on the T2-weighted image, there is a cyst, a synovial cyst, that is also compressing the spinal canal. And you can see fluid within the facet joint. So it's like joint effusion. There is a joint effusion in this facet joint. This fluid is very important, and I will tell you why in the coming slides. Now, again, let's look here. This is a severe spinal canal stenosis. You can see the spinal canal is very small. There is a disc here. And there is the ligamentum flavum hypertrophy here. And there is the facet joint disease here, causing osteophytes, bulging into the spinal canal, narrowing the spinal canal, and narrowing the exit nerve, uh, the exit foramen. The exit foramen here is very severely compressed. This is a normal image. You can see, normally, you can the exit nerve root is very 
beautifully demonstrated, and you can see the nerve root here very clearly seen. And this is a normal facet joint. This is a, an unhealthy, uh, de de degenerated facet joint. Now, regarding the synovial cyst that we talked about before, it is a cyst arising from within the synovial joint, from the synovial membrane that is surrounding the joint. And you can see, when you look at the T1 image, there is some lesion here. We are not sure what it is. If you look at the axial T2 weighted image, you can see there is a cyst arising from this facet joint. This is a synovial cyst compressing the spinal canal and the, the, displacing the nerve roots to the other side. So, what the clinicians want to know from us in this regarding the, the things that we talked about, they need to have a description of any foraminal encroachment of the superior facet joints. Is there any foraminal narrowing from the facet joint disease? Is there any spondylolisthesis, lateral lysthesis? Is, is there any facet joint hypertrophy? which might be the cause of the back pain. You can see that the facet joint is the cause of the back pain rather than the narrowing of the spinal canal itself. And this will indicate any, uh, will be indication for spinal stabilization surgery. There will be fusion between the vertebra to stabilize them. Let's look here. First of all, there is a spondylolisthesis. Grade one, the L4 is moving anteriorly on the L5 vertebral body. So this is a grade one degenerative spondylolisthesis or anterolisthesis, as I like to call it. There, this hypo intense part, this is a T2 weighted image. The hypo intense part here is a ligamentum flavor. So there is a ligamentum flavor hypertrophy. If we go to the axial images T1 and T2, you can see the ligamentum flavor is very markedly thick, causing severe narrowing of the spinal canal and the thecal sac, and you can see the disc bulge here also compressing the spinal canal. However, if you look carefully, see the facet joint here and here, they are not healthy. There is an osteophyte here also compressing the spinal canal, adding to the spinal canal stenosis, and there is fluid in the facet joint. Here, there is a fluid comp uh, in joint effusion, okay? So, again, what the clinician needs to know, facet or fluid in the facet joint, if there is any fluid in the facet joint, usually associated with degenerative spondylolisthesis. Not always, but usually it is due to degenerative spondylolisthesis. Strongly consider it as a possible source of the lower back pain. Patient is complaining of back pain. The fluid in the synovial joint is a very important cause of the back pain. Particularly, if the facet joint is expanded by fluid, the facet joint is widened by fluid, this is a high suspicion of the cause of the back pain, okay? For example, look here. This is a paramedian sagittal T2 weighted image. You can see here there is a hyper-intense signal, which is on T2. This hyper-intense signal is synovial fluid. On the axial images, you can see the synovial fluid here and here. And it is distracting, it is opening the facet joint. And this is a very high reason uh, that the cause of the back pain is from this facet joint effusion. Now, let's talk about the ligamentous pathology. What are the ligaments that are of, are, that are of importance to us in these uh, conditions? We have the ligamentum flavor and the posterior longitudinal, longitudinal ligaments. These are the two most important ligaments to consider. They can hypertrophy, calcify, and ossify, okay? okay. This is the part where the ligamentum flavum is seen. It is on the uh, ventral surface of the lamina, okay? This is the ligamentum flavum here and here, and it is thickened, hypertrophied, narrowing the spinal canal narrowing the fecal sac, compressing the fecal sac. You can see also here, this is another uh, level. It is very narrowed by this ligamentum flavor. And if you do a CT scan, you might see a calcification or ossification even of the ligamentum flavor, most commonly calcification. Ligamentum flavor hypertrophy in the cervical uh, spinal canal also can be seen as buckling, this hypo-intense things 
posteriorly, posterior to the fecal sacs, not in the anterior part. The anterior part here is due to discs and osteophyte, the disc osteophyte complex. While posteriorly, what are these hypo intense things? These are hypertrophied ligamentum flavum. Classification of the posterior longitudinal ligament is a disease entity common in uh, Southeast Asia. Okay, but we see every now and then we see a cases of uh, OPLL, ossification of the posterior longitudinal ligament. You can see here thickening of the post. This is the anatomical site of the posterior longitudinal ligament at the midline of the posterior aspect of the vertebral bodies. Okay, and you can see here it's thick. It's extended over multiple vertebral levels and it is hypointense on all sequences. So, this is not a disc. Here, there is no disc. There, here is the disc. So, what's this hypointense thing? This is a hypertrophied uh, posterior longitudinal ligament. And if you do a CT scan, you can see it is calcified or ossified. Okay? This is an ossification of the posterior longitudinal ligament compressing the spinal cord and causing spinal canal stenosis. Okay? Now, another example of ossification of the posterior longitudinal ligament, it is not as severe as the previous case, it's less severe, but again, we can see this is the spinal cervical uh, vertebrae, the cervical vertebrae, and you can see a hypointense something, a hypointensity extending over multiple vertebral levels, okay? This hypointense, since it's not only the disc, it involves the adjacent vertebral body, it indicates thickening of the posterior longitudinal ligament, which means that this posterior longitudinal ligament most likely is calcified. To confirm, you need a CT scan. On the axial images, you can see this posterior longitudinal ligament that is thick and hypointense, and it's compressing the spinal cord. The important thing to know is that it is seen over the vertebral body, not only over the disc. Over the disc, most likely it's a disc herniation. While if it is over the vertebral body, it is an ossified posterior longitudinal ligament. Now, vertebral displacement. When one vertebra moves over the adjacent or the other vertebra, it's called spondylolisthesis if it moves, if the, the vertebra above moves anterior to the vertebra below. You always put a base or a line or a rule in your mind. If the, you always fix the lower vertebra and move the upper vertebra, the upper vertebra moves anterior or posterior. If the upper vertebra moves anteriorly, this is spondylolisthesis or anterolisthesis. If the upper vertebra moves posteriorly, this is retrolisthesis, okay? Spondylolisthesis or anterolisthesis is composed of four grades, grade one, two, three, and four. And we, I think we all know the grade one is less than 25%, 25 to 50, 50 to 75, and more than 75% of the vertebral displacement. The anterolisthesis can be either lytic, which means a defect in the lamina, which is most likely congenital, or it can be degenerative. The retrolisthesis, there is no grading for it, but you can use grade one, two, or three, or four, just like the anterolisthesis, but no, there's no scientific official uh, grading for it. Now, for example here, this is the at this level, you can see this vertebral body moving and, uh, anterior to the lower one. You fix the lower one, ثبت اللي جوا وتحرك اللي فوق. ثبت الvertebral body اللي جوا وتحرك الvertebral body اللي فوق. تحرك. This is moving about 25% of the diameter of the vertebral body, indicating its grade one spondylolisthesis or anterolisthesis is the same. Again here. You ثبت الجوا وتحرك الفوق. If الجوا ثابت ما علينا بي. الفوق متحرك anteriorly. The above vertebral body is moving anteriorly. This is anterolisthesis or spondylolisthesis. Here it is more than one quarter of the vertebral body below. It's more than 25, less than 50. 
So it is grade two spondylolisthesis, and this produce what's called pseudo disc bulge. There's no disc bulge here, but because this vertebra is moving anteriorly, you see some pseudo disc bulge. Okay, on the axial images, the disc is not bulging. Regarding spinal canal stenosis, the most common cause is spondylosis, osteoarthritis of the vertebral bodies and the facet joints and the surrounding structures. Narrowing of the spinal canal, neural foramina and lateral recesses, all of them collectively cause spinal canal stenosis. The fat, the epidural fat will be effaced and the CSF spaces will be compressed or narrowed. It happens usually secondary to multifactorial degenerative changes. يعني مو شغله واحده اللي مسويه سبانال كانال تنوز مو بس ديسك ديسك واستيوفايتس وفاس جوينت وليجامنت اوف ليفا مو سبانال انستابيلتي يعني انتيرولستيسيس ريتورستيسيس سام تايمز ايفن كونجينيتال شورت بيديكال ذا بيديكال از كونجينيتال شورت كوز سبانال كانال تنوزس سو سبانال كانال تنوزس از ا مالتي فاكتوريال اب نورماليتي اوكي ناو This is a normal disc and this is an abnormal disc or spinal canal stenosis disc. Normal disc, you can see the vertebral body here. The, verte the intervertebral disc is uh, concave and the fecal sac here in between and the facet joint not bulging on the fecal sac. While if there is spinal canal stenosis, you will see the gametum of levum hypertrophy, osteoarthritis of the facet joint in addition to disc uh, disease. This will be All uh, cause, causes of spinal stenosis. Let's look here. This is an illustration of mild, uh, this is a normal, mild, moderate, and severe narrowing of the cervical spinal canal. The normal uh, cervical spinal canal has CSF anterior and posterior to the cord, okay? And the cord is not uh, affected by any abnormality surrounding it. Here, The spinal cord, there's no CSF posterior to it, just anterior. This is a mild, okay, narrowing. Here, the spinal cord, there's no CSF anteriorly or posterior to it. This is a moderate spinal canal stenosis, while here the, CS, the spinal cord is compressed with even increased signal intensity at this level. This is severe spinal canal stenosis. So what the clinicians want to know at this stage? First, there is no absolute measurement of the canal that are useful. Maybe we can try to measure the, disc, the, the diameter of the spinal canal for future reference. يعني قسناها اليوم كانت مثلا spinal canal 12. After 2-3 months we repeated the MRI, the spinal canal becomes 10. Then this indicates increasing severity of the spinal canal stenosis. بس رقم رقم ثابت يقولي هذا spinal canal stenosis ما عندنا هيك رقم. اكو اراء ناس تقول 12 ملم، ناس تقول 11، ناس تقول 10، ما عندنا رقم ابسولوت. فبما انه ما عندنا نورمال فاليو، ذا مورفولوجيك ابييرنس اوف ذا لمبر سباين، ذا شيب اوف ذا شورت بيديكل، ذا كومبليت لوس اوف ابيديورال فات، ذا ريليتيف اوفر اوفر جروث اوف ذا فاسيد جوينتس، ذا ليجامنتم اوف ليفر، ذيس ار very important and useful findings for the assessment of the canal stenosis. يعني احنا نقول spinal canal stenosis due to مثلا facet joint disease, ligamentum flavor hypertrophy, disc herniation, and مثلا short pedicle. These are the, the things that are causing the spinal canal rather than just a measurement. Many of them go spinal canal measured 11 millimeter indicating spinal canal stenosis. هذا مو صعب حاجة. Let's see here. This, then we'll see uh, images at two different levels. Of course, the L4-5 level here is very severely compressed, less severe or mild compression at the L5-S1. We can see here, this is the axial image at the L5-S1 level, you can see this is a diffuse disc bulge and some facet joint disease here and there, mild, normal ligamentum of flavum, so there is no significant spinal canal stenosis. If we go to the L4-5 level, the severe one, you can see everything. Osteoarthritis of the facet joint, uh, joint fluid, ligamentum flavum hypertrophy, disc, and there is marked narrowing of the exit foramina on both sides, more on the right side. These are the findings. 
you might add measurement of the spinal uh, of the spinal canal at this level like ap and lateral diameter for future reference so what the clinicians need to know from us they need to know if the stenosis involving predominantly the lateral recess low central canal هذا كلش مهم انه نقول الستينوسس اكثر شيء باللاترالي لو بالسنترال بارت ات ميكس ذا مانجمنت ديفرنس ريسنتلي ريسنت داتا شوز ذا لاترال ريسس ستينوسس سيندروم اتس ا كوز اوف باك بين اند كلوديكيشن ماني بيبل هاف لاترال ريسس ستينوسس وبال ريسنت ييرز صار عندنا ديفلوبمنت بالبين مانجمنت ذا بين مانجمنت سبيشالست ذي manage the lateral recess uh, stenosis very good uh, very minimally invasive and with very good results هنا راح يكون عندنا شغله لازم نعرفه انه اليونج بيشنت مو مثل الاولدر بيشنت اليونجر انديفيدوالز فيري امبورتنت نعرف انه الستينوسس ات وان ليفل لو اكثر اند اف ات از اسوشيتد وذ يونيلاترال راديكلوباثي يعني واحد عنده يونيلاترال راديكلوباثي هذا الستينوسس ات وان ليفل لو مور For young individuals, it's more important than older person. Please, an older person usually present with bilateral pain. The stenosis is most commonly, most commonly due to the central compression of the spinal canal. So, the treatment will be a wide decompression procedure. They will open everything. They will open the lamina. They will open the posterior arch. All of them will, I mean, they will remove the compression by. Uh, wide decompression procedure. For young individuals, the intervention minimally invasive. Maybe you don't need to go more than the last. At least it's possible. So we have to be very specific and say that this young patient, when the stenosis is very severe, it's mild. Let's see now. This is a normal disc. This is narrowing due to mild facet joint disease, maybe mild ligament and flavor hypertrophy. Narrowing the lateral recess on the right and left side, maybe more on the left side, while here it is ligamentum flavum hypertrophy, narrowing the spinal canal, compressing the lateral recess bilaterally more on the right side. Okay? So, what the clinicians need to know? Also, the diameter of the spinal canal, not the compressed, the widened spinal canal important. Yani, it's The central canal or spinal canal, if it is more than 20 millimeter, it's called capacious central canal, wide central canal, large, areva, chibira, high central canal. Leash, if it is more than 20 meter, can be a cause of back pain because of the ectetic or the dilated dura. يعني شوف هنا أنا سأقول الله شلون هذا spinal canal حلو. لا. This spinal canal is capacious, is more than 20 millimeters, 21 millimeters. So it is big, it is ectetic, and it might be a cause of back pain. Hatta lo ko adna hadal disc, I know, but this is a whole story, another story. We'll talk about it later. Cord pathology, it's in the degenerative disc disease is due to cord compression. Cord compression happens either by the disc or by the adjacent structures that we talked about it can be early or late both of them will produce hypointense signal on t1 hyperintense signal on t2 يعني edema t1 و t2 okay in early will late بس شو نفرقهم first of all clinical presentation زائدا contrast injection ال acute ياخذ contrast enhancement ال chronic ما ياخذ contrast enhancement okay يعني شوف هنا هذا الديسك مسوي وعندك ليجامنت او فليفوم هايبرتروفي مسوي لنا سباينال كانال ستينوسيس سباينال كانال ستينوسيس كومبريشن انكريست تي 2 سيجنال انتنسيتي اوف ذا سباينال كورد ات ذيس ليفل اوكي هنا افتر تريتمنت يو كان سي بيرزيست هايبر انتنس سيجنال ذيس انديكيتس ان الكومبريشن هو مو اكيوت هو كرونيك الاكيوت عاده بال يعني after treatment it will resolve وممكن ياخذ contrast الاكيوت خلينا نشوف هنا هسه عندنا examples compressive myelomalacia يعني myelopathy myelomalacia or disease of the spinal cord due to compression as we said it appears as high signal intensity on the T2 weighted image when we do surgery decompression 
if an early lesion, the acute, usually it will resolve. Okay? The changes will resolve. But if a late, it will not resolve. The early will have contrast enhancement, the late will not have contrast enhancement. Yeah, let's see here. We have compression of the spinal cord at this level. This is T2, C2, 3, 4, 5, 6. C5, 6, maybe C6, 7. Uh, there is a spinal uh, cord compression. Increased T2 signal intensity. Also here, you can see this is the disc and it's compressing the spinal cord with increased T2 signal intensity. Then, what's the difference between here and here? Can you tell me what's the difference between here and here? There is a surgery. The spinous processes here are gone. See how the spinous process, spinous process, spinous process, spinal process. Now, we don't have C1, oh, sorry, C2, and then no spinal processes. It's getting decompression procedure. So, all the surgery or uh, shadow compression on the spinal cord. You can see there is no compression here. The normal spinous process is compression. This indicates decompressive procedure. Then, if a madam decompressive procedure, huh? Least baqi el hyper intense signal of the spinal cord. Then it is not acute. It's chronic process, and the myelomalacia is permanent. It was not acute. Another example of spinal cord compression you can see it with increased T2 signal intensity of the spinal cord. Now. هذاك كل جهة هسه راح ابدا بجهة ثانية، راح ابدا بشغلة ثانية اللي هي المين كورس، الوجبة الرئيسية مالتنا، ليش مقبلات، اوكي؟ شنو الوجبة الرئيسية مالتنا؟ الديسك ليجن، الديسك ابنورماليتي. الديسك اتس ابنورماليتي كان بي ايذر ديسك ديجنريشن، ديسك بولج، اور ديسك هيرنيشن، اوكي؟ وي ويل توك اباوت ذات. فيرست اوف اول لازم نعرف انه الايج اوف ذا بيشنت از فيري امبورتنت ان Determining the susceptibility to disc lesions. 20 to 40 years old have 36 percent disc disease. Only 36 percent. With increasing age, about 50 years, we will have up to 95 percent degenerated discs. 60 to 80, even 98 percent degenerated discs. And keep in mind, people less than 60 years of age, 20 percent of them have asymptomatic disc herniation. لازم يكون سيمبتوماتيك. الناس اللي اعمارهم اقل من 60 ها 20% of them يعني هم نسبه كبيره عندهم اسيمبتوماتيك ديسك هيرنيشن تباوع بالام ار اي تلاقيه اكو ديسك هيرنيشن. البيشنت از اسيمبتوماتيك. سو اب نورمال فايندينجز اون ام ار اي دو نوت ريليتد تو ذا سيمبتومز اند فايس فيرسا سيمبتومز دو نوت ريليت تو ذا اب نورمال فايندينجز اوف ام ار اي فريكونت يعني ممكن تشوف ديسك وبيشنت اسيمبتوماتيك، ممكن بيشنت سيمبتوماتيك وما تشوف ديسك. Both of them are possible. Normal disc anatomy, we have said that in the previous slides. Central, hyper intense, nucleus pulposus, and hypo intense annulus fibrosus, which have low signal intensity on all sequences. Full sequences have low signal intensity. The posterior margin of the disc, هذا الجزء اللي احنا يهمنا أكثر شيء. Posterior margin of the disc is mildly concave. ممكن number vertebrae, number discs يكون flat. Okay. بال lumbosacral junction يعني L5 S1 ممكن يكون minimally convex, شوية convex. بال L5 S1 فقط. Okay. A degenerative disc disease. شنو توقع إن شو بي? Disc تعبان. This degenerated. أول شيء راح يصير loss of the T2 signal intensity. يعني ال annual ال nucleus pulposus اللي قلنا تكون hyper intense لأنه hydrated بال T2 weighted image لازم يكون T2 weighted will be lost. راح تصير dehydrated. راح يروح المي. راح يروح ال hyper intense signal intensity. The disc height will be reduced. There will be some diffuse disc bulge. We will talk about that in a few slides. We can see interfissural fluid and we can see vacuum clefts. Vacuum clefts, يعني clefts, be gas. هذا gas هو nitrous oxide. It's part of the degenerative process. Now, regarding the annular tear or the fissure, 
شنو يعني فيرسس ديسك هرنيشن اذا صار الانيوس فايبروسس هي رينج اوف فايبروس تشو سراوندينج ذا نيوكليوس بروبوسس اذا صار سيبريشن او بريك بالهاي فايبرز مال الانيوس فايبروسس راح يصير فشل اوكي It does not imply trauma. We don't know how many patients trauma or, for example, the accident or fall from height. No, this is part of degenerative process, usually asymptomatic, but can be a source of pain. Okay. In any of us, if we can hyperintense on all sequences, if the acufisher, we will see hyperintense signal in the annulus fibrosis, and usually occurs posteriorly. The annulus fibrosis is weakest at the posterior part. Okay. Disc herniation. Show me. Show the definition of disc herniation. Or displacement of disc material beyond the limit of the intervertebral disc space. يعني إذا الديسك ماتيريال not displaced حتى لو أكو فشر يعني أي وصف أي وصف بيها فشر بيها increased T two signal intensity. But the disc material is not displaced beyond the limit. This is not disc herniation. This is just annular tear. The disc herniation, which is displaced outside the limit of the disc, can be either contained or uncontained. Contained, meaning covered by the outermost fibers. After the end of the annulus fibers, the outermost fibers are not in place. Uncontained, no, the fibers are all covered. All of them are covered. The material is not in place. For example, toothpaste, with a sore mouth. For example, here we can see that this annular tear. This herniation, but it is contained. The outermost fibers are intact, are present. No, it is not contained. The disc material is extruded from the disc limit. Let's show the T2 weighted image. You can see this is a degenerated, dehydrated loss of the annular nucleus pulposus, white signal intensity or hyper signal or high T2 signal intensity compared with the above and below. And you can see here fluid signal. This is the annulus fibrosus. Annulus fibrosus does it called hyperintense on all sequences. Now we have fluid here, or high intense signal. This indicates tear, fissure. Okay. A coherniation lola is the disc material extending outside the disc lola. Yes, it does. It is extending outside the disc, indicating fissure, tear plus herniation. Okay. Fissure. Plus herniation. Now, can we show the axial images? This is a T2 with the image. You can see the fissure here, and the disc is extruded or uh, bulging or herniated outside the disc limit. Okay, compressing the exit foramen, and on the T1 is also C. Now, in this herniation. Can have displacement of the disc material beyond the limit of the intervertebral disc space, and 95% at L4-5 and L5-S1. Yeah, L4-5, L5-S1, common common causes or sites of this herniation. L3-4 is up to 8%. L2-3 is up to 2%, and only 1% at L1-2 or T12-L1. The cervical spine most common at between C4 to C7. By multiple factors. The thoracic is very un, يعني less than other levels. Fifteen percent usually asymptomatic patients with multiple levels. Who are asymptomatic? The dorsal spine. This, but the next one is the terminology of the disc herniation. If one of these is wrong, based on my knowledge, we have no standardized terminology for morphologic disc abnormalities. Ma aku. في قانون او في جايد لاين او في شيء ثابت الكل يمشي عليه. النيورو سيرجري عندهم كلاسيفيكيشن شكل، الاورثوبيدكس عندهم كلاسيفيكيشن شكل، الراديولوجي عندهم كلاسيفيكيشن شكل، ستاندرايزد فور اول لحد الان ما اوكي؟ هواي ديسكربشنز هاف بين، ا لوت اوف ديسكربشنز هاف بين يوزد. ناس تقول بولت، هرنيشن، برولابس، رابتشر، بروتروجن، اكستروجن، مايجريشن، سكوستريشن، فاري ان مينينج اند امبورتنس. And from from patient to patient, from location to location. So, معناها من يجي تقرير مكتوبي terms you are not using in your report. مو تقرير غلط. A lot of terms. Radiologist, 
كتب حسب اللي هو متعود عليه مو معناها هو تقرير غلط هو ما اكو ستاندرايز تيرمينولوجي او جايد لاين اول اوفر ذا وورد هيرنيشن ذا تيرم هيرنيشن كلمه هيرنيشن اتس نوت سبيسيفيك فالشغله كلش عامه اتس نوت سبيسيفيك فور ان ابييرنس اتس يوزد اونلي وين ذا ايمج كواليتي از سب اوبتيمال اور وير مور سبيسيفيك دايجنوسيس كان نوت بي ميد لاي سبب من الاسباب ما تقدر تشخص بالضبط تقول هيرنيشن اذروايز ما يصير اذا ايمج زينه وحسب ما انت تريدها ومضبوطه ما يصير تقول ديسك هيرنيشن كلمه هيرنيشن غلط لانه نون سبيسيفيك يعني انت تقول ما بالفتره الاخيره اخر كم سنه اكو نومنكليتشر بروجكت انيشيتد باي ذا امريكان سوسايتي اوف سباين راديولوجي اكو لها وايد اكسبتنس امونج راديولوجيست والكليشنز والسيرجنز يعني شبه متفقين عليها بس هو مو يعني مو اخر كلام بس المتفق عليه حاليا هو هذا اللي هو الامريكان سوسايتي اوف سباين راديولوجي كلاسيفيكيشن شنو التيرمز مال هذا الكلاسيفيكيشن؟ ديفيوز ديسك بولج كان بي سيمتريك او اسيمتريك برود بيست ديسك بروتروجين فوكال ديسك بروتروجين ديسك ايستروجين مايجريشن اند سكوستريشن هسه راح نشوف الفرق بيناتهم بهذا الكلاسيفيكيشن مال الامريكان سوسايتي اوف سباين راديولوجي لحظه بس اتس وي ديفايد ذا ديسك انتو فور كوارترز اربع اربع نقسم الديسك كل واحد 25% او 90 ديجري This is a normal disc نعم الديفيوز ديسك بولج هو السيركونفرنشال اكستنشن اوف ذا ديسك بيوند ذا مارجن اوف اند بلاي سيركونفرنشال مو فوكال اتس ديفيوز بيوند ذا مارجن اوف ذا اند بلاي اذا اكثر من 50% اوف ذا ديسك سيركونفرنس يعني اكثر من ربعين من الديسك يسموه ديفيوز ديسك بولج يوزوالي ليس دان 3 ملم اند يوزوالي اسوشيتد وذ ديجنريتيف ديسك ديزيز It is not considered a form of herniation. The diffuse disc bulge is not herniation. Okay? Shlon yani can be symmetric or asymmetric. The disc aber more than two quarters, اكثر من ربع عين ال 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 vertebral body. Okay? It's a more diffuse disc bulge. This is not herniation. Can be symmetric. يعني هي طالع على كل الجهات. Or can be asymmetric. طالع على جهة اكثر من من الجهات الاخرى. Okay, can be symmetric or asymmetric. Okay. مثلا نشوف هنا هذا normal intervertebral disc. It is not bulging outside the limit of the vertebral end plate. حد إلى end plate. It is hydrated, no degenerative disc disease, not dehydrated discs. This is a normal. هسا شو رأيك؟ شو بقى شنو الفرق هنا؟ This is a degenerated disc. This is loss of the High intense signal of the nucleus pulposus. It is a dehydrated disc, and it extends beyond the end plate limit. طالع لبرة. إذا شو بالأجزيل? It is extending all over. يعني حتى بالأجزيل من the front, من the anterior, من the posterior part. It is bulging. So this is diffuse symmetrical diffuse disc bulge. More than fifty percent. أكثر من ربعين. خلينا نشوف هنا we have هذا طالع من الامام من ال... يعني posteriorly it is bulging more than anteriorly و it is dehydrated degenerated disc اذا نشوفها بالاكزيال it is more لا like, it's more than 50% so it is a diffuse disc bulge symmetric or asymmetric here ممكن يكون asymmetric رايح على جهه ال left اكثر من ال right نعم Broad based disc progression. إسا حنتقلنا من الهرنية من ال diffuse disc bulge إلى شوية أقل اللي هو more than fifty percent إلى أقل منه اللي هو twenty five to fifty. يعني إذا هرنية disc بين ربع إلى ربعين هذا يسموه disc broad based disc herniation. يعني من twenty five ضرب ربع إلى ربعين من الربع إلى النص. Between 25 to 50% have a broad-based disc bulge. Oh, sorry, broad-based disc herniation. يعني هذا disc herniation ضارب يعني مؤثر على أو غير مؤذي 
اقل من النص واكثر من الربع so this is a broad based discrimination نفس الشيء شوف هنا this is between 90 to 180 degrees so it's between 25 to 50% of the disc this indicates broad based disc bulge so you can see this herniation you can see here broad based left disc herniation it can narrow both exit foramen لانه هو مثل يعني اقل من الديفيوز ديسك بولت فممكن يسوي لنا ون اور تو اكزيت فرامينا سو فور مي اي رايت مثلا ليفت بارا سنترال برود بيست ديسك بروتروجن اند ناروينج بوث اكزيت فرامينا مور اون ذا ليفت سايد اور مور اون ذا رايت سايد اوكي اجين برود بيست ديسك بروتروجن يو كان سي هير ات از ليس ذان هاو مور ذان كوارتر ليس ذان 50% more than 25%. This is a broad-based disc herniation. It is more on the little bit left side than the right side. Kind of sore, T1, first row, T1, second row, T2. Okay, T1, T2. You can see this is broad-based right disc protrusion. Narrowing both exit for a minute, more on the right side. Had the left, you can normal, يعني ما كلش effective. اوكي حتى نتاكد نعرف هذا الشغله ناخذ لاين على البيس مال الديسك اوكي ناو هنا شوف البيس مال الديسك اند يو كان سي ذس ذا هايت اوف ذا ديسك از ليس ذان ذا بيس اند ذس انديكيتس ذس بروتوجين هسه راح احكي لكم عليها هاي الشغله نجي على الفوكال ديسك هيرنيشن خلصنا الديفيوز ديسك بولت والبرود بيس ديسك هيرنيشن هسه الفوكال ديسك هيرنيشن فوكال يعني اقل من 25% أو اقل من 90 درجه اوكي اقل من ربع اقل من ربع اللي افكتد يوزوالي فوكال يعني هو سمول 25% اسيمتريك اكستنشن اوف ذا ديسك هنا الشغله اللي لازم بس انتبهوا لي على هاي البيس is broader than any other dimension in any other plane okay base malta base هاي القاعدة أقرب أو أكبر من كل الديمنشنز الأخرى بكل البلينز هذا هسه راح نعرف ليش هسه هذا ديسك it is less than 90% أقل من ربع الديسك يعني هاي المسافة 3 4 هاي ما not involved بس this part involved So it's less than 25% indicating disc protrusion. The base, huh? The base, أكبر أو أعرض من the height. This is protrusion. Again, خلينا نشوف هذا CT scan. هنا, this is focal disc protrusion, less than 25%. Okay, the base, أكبر أو أعرض من the height. The MRI, هم ممكن نشوفه. Can be central, can be paracentral. The important is that the base more than what the height. Okay. Now, show the base. Aqa akthar min the height. The base akthar min the height. This is a protrusion. Had a central disc protrusion. Now, show the base center. Mojoo. Mungkin ikun foramenal. اكثر شيء ماثر لنا على الاكزيت فورامين وكومبرسيت النير روت اوكي اجين البيس مور ذان ذا هايت اوف ذا ديسك فوكال ديسك بروتروجين همينا نشوفه هنا على ال 5 اس 1 حتى بالبوست كونتراست نو انهانسمنت يعني نو سيجنفيكانت انهانسمنت هسه نشوف هذا بروترود الديسك على ال 4 5 ليفل البيس اكبر من الهايت Less than 25% of the disc circumference. If I divide the disc into four four, this is less than a quarter, indicating disc protrusion. No broad-based, well diffused disc bulge. The disc extrusion. What is the disc extrusion? If the distance from the height is more than the base, in at least one plane, one plane, the 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 أكثر من القاعدة أكثر من البيس صار إكستروجين هو همينا less than 25% it is less than 
بس البيس اقل من الارتفاع او الارتفاع اكثر من البيس هسه نشوف اكزامبلز عليه This is more likely to be symptomatic هذا الشيء يكون symptomatic اكثر شوف الهايت مالته more than the base in at least one plane ممكن two planes مثل هنا البيس اقل من الهايت نشوف مثلا بهذا الايمج نقدر نقول عليه اكو ديسك هيرميشن زين هذا less than 25% so it is a disc protrusion بس مباوع البيس مالته اقل من الهايت اوكي هذا معناها شنو البيس اقل من الهايت معناها ديس اكستروجن يعني انتقلنا من الكلاسيفيكيشن اللي هو ديفيوز ديس بولج لو برود بيس ديس بروتروجن لا ولا هذا ولا هذا هو اقل من 25% اذا فاحنا بالديس بروتروجن زين بروتروجن لو اكستروجن البيس اكثر لو اقل من الارتفاع يعني تلاحظوا البروسيس نشوف هنا هذا تقول شوفه تقول عليه ديسك بروتروجن ليش؟ هذا 25% من الفيرتبرال دايمتر البيس اعرض من الارتفاع ممكن البيس والارتفاع تقيسه يا هو الاكبر اذا البيس اكثر من الارتفاع فهذا بروتروجن اذا الهايت اكثر من البيس فهذا اكستروجن اوكي؟ خلينا نشوف هنا بالسرفايكل سباين عندنا ديسك هنا البيس ريليتد تو ذا هايت البيس اقل من الهايت فذس از اكستروجن نشوفه بالاكزيال راح نعرف انه هو ليس دار 25% فهو لو بروتروجن لو اكستروجن الهايت اكثر من البيس معناها هو اكستروجن نجي نشوف هنا نظر اكزامبل الهايت مور ذان ذا بيس سو ذس از ذس اكستروجن نظر اكزامبل اوف ذا سيرفايكل كورد طبعا اكو اللي قالوا انت مو فليفم هايبرتروفي الهايت مور ذان ذا بيس ذس از اكستروجن حط ببالك الديسك ماتيريال اللي هي بوستيريورلي ديسبليسد يعني الهيرنييتد ماتيريال اكو بالسنتر ان ذا سنتر وي هاف ذا بوستيرير لونجيتودينال ليجمنت هاي بوستيرير لونجيتودينال ليجمنت راح تلزم الديسك ماتيريال ات ويل كيب ذا ديسك ماتيريال ان اتس بليس اوكي فممكن تشوف بال ديسك بروتروجين بالاكسيال بس بالساجيتال يطلع اكستروجين فتعتبره اكستروجين هسه نشوف شلون مثلا هذا الليفل تشوف البيس اكثر من الهايت من البيس اكثر من الهايت ذس از بروتروجين لكن اذا تباوع الساجيتال ايمج تلقي البيس اقل معناها يا هو مش بروتروجين او اكستروجين لا الاكستروجين يغلط ون بلين اذا ون بلين الساجيتال او الاكسيال تشوف اذا تشوف بس بالاكسيال او بس بالساجيتال او بثيناتو الديسك هايت اكثر من البيس هذا اكستروجين راسا اوتوماتيكي اوكي نشوف هنا بروتروجين او اكستروجين مبدئيا يبدو انه البيس اكثر من الهايت سو ات لوكس لايك ا ديسك بروتروجين بس احتاج اشوف الساجيتال الاذر بلين اوكي شوف الساجيتال لا البيس قليل والهايت واي اكثر معناها نمشي البروتروجين مال الاكسيال لو الاكستروجين مال الساجيتال لا يمشي الاكستروجين مال الساجيتال اوكي هسه هذا ديسك اكستروجين لانه هنا بالاكسيال البيس اكثر من الهايت بس بالساجيتال البيس اقل من الاكستروديد بارت سو ذس از اكستروجين اوكي الديسك اكستروجين ممكن يكون مايجريتد او نون مايجريتد النون مايجريتد انه باقي بمكانه مثل هنا هذا اكستروديد نون مايجريتد اذا موفد اواي فروم ذا ديسك بس ستيل كونكتد بعد ما اتصل بالديسك الاصلي ذس از نون يعني مايجريتد بس مو سكوستريتد اذا انفصل عن الاصلي اف ات سيبريتد فروم ذا اوريجينال ديسك ذس از sequestrated disc يعني هذا disc extrusion with migration هذا disc sequestration خلينا نشوف examples ايش عندنا هنا؟ عندنا disc 
extrusion لانه هو البيس اقل من height صح؟ this is disc extrusion بس هذا migrated upward migrated superiorly تمام؟ ما دام migrated superiorly لازم نقرر هو sequestrated لو not sequestrated باقي على اتصاله بالديسك الاصلي لو فصل عنه اذا باقي على اتصاله معناها migrated not sequestrated اذا منفصل معناها sequestrated disc خلينا نشوف هنا this is disc extrusion لانه الهايت اكثر من البيس اوكي and it is still connected with the parent disc so this is sequestrated disc uh, sorry extruded disc disc extrusion with downward downward migration بس no sequestration كل شوية دخلنا بس I'm trying يعني more examples حتى نتعلم على الموضوع again now this is T1 and T2 you can see the height is more than the base معناها disc extrusion زين do we have migration or we don't have migration yes we have migration it's migrated superiorly like four up okay connected with the parent disc or not connected connected with the parent disc by the way the parent disc okay so this is not sequestrated and this is sequestration the way this uh, extrusion plus separated from the parent disc and it is usually symptomatic yani other disc will extruded part separated from the parent disc مثل هنا it is separated from the parent disc خلينا نشوف هذا الاكزامبل نشوف هنا عندنا something على level of L5 vertebra this is disc okay extrusion واكو lesion or something here على ال L5 it is separated from the parent disc حتى مطي contrast هنا شوف it is enhancing peripherally separated from the disc معناها هذا extruded sequestrated component يعني sequestrated part is migrated inferior again another example you can see here there is a disc and it's extruded migrating inferiorly لازم نقرر هذا البارت connected لو not connected لل original disc here it is little bit separated if you see it is separated this is disc sequestration and extrusion or sequestration or migrating inferior Again, you can see here this is disc and there is a lesion here separated from the parent disc. What is this lesion? It is an extruded uh, component of the disc. Sometimes, sometimes, can the disc will extruded component several levels away. L3, 4 extruded or sequestrated fragments on L5 or on S1. لازم تكون كيرفل يعني انه هذا الاكسودد ديسك يعني من ليفل عالي جاي يعني مو شرط يكون ادجيسنت تو ات مو شرط يكون بصفه لا ممكن يكون من ديسك اعلى لازم نحير به حتى نلخص كل الحكي اللي حكيناه خلينا نشوف على هذا الدايجرام فالدايجرام كلش بسيط اذا نركز عليه الديسك انقسمه الابنورمال او اي ديسك انقسمه الى اربع ارباع 25% او كل واحد 90 ديجريز If either the disc is more than 50%, more than 50%, or more than 180 degrees, أكثر من نصف vertebral body, هذا نسميه bulge, diffuse disc bulge. The diffuse disc bulge ممكن يكون symmetrical or asymmetrical. Okay? إذا أكثر من 50%. إذا أقل من 50 إذا يعني أقل من 50% أو أقل من نص الدائرة أقل من 180 راح نقسمه الى اذا اقل من 180 راح نسميها رنيش اوكي اذا اقل من 180 اقل من نص الدائره راح نسميها رنيش زين هذا الهرنيش راح نقسمه ربع الى نص واقل من ربع يعني 25 to 50 less than 25 اذا 25 to 50 راح نسميه broad based protrusion اذا اكثر من ربع واقل من نص يعني ربع وشوية يسموه broad based protrusion إذا أقل من 25 يعني أقل من الربع راح نسميه focal disc protrusion مو broad based focal disc protrusion هذا يكون بـ 
نو نباعوا على الفوكال ديسك بروتوجي اللي هو الربع او اقل اقل من ربع نباعوا بي ويست بي خصر اذا ما بي ويست فهو بروتروجن اذا بي ويست فهو اكستروجن يعني اذا البيس اقل من الهايت هذا اكستروجن اذا البيس اكثر من الهايت هذا بروتروجن زين الاكستروجن ممكن يكون مايجريتد سيكوستريتد او نايفر ممكن يكون بس اكستروجن ممكن يكون مايجريتد سوبيريورلي او انفيريورلي وممكن يكون سيكوستريتد اصلا مفصول عن الديسك الاصلي ورايح لغير ليفل اوكي هذا هو الاكسبتد مال النورث امريكان سباين سوسايتي والامريكان سوسايتي اوف سباين راديولوجي والامريكان سوسايتي اوف نيورو راديولوجي اوكي ممكن فيرذر جريدنج للهرنيشن انتو سمول مودريت لارج طبعا هذا يختلف من واحد لواحد سبجكتيف مو اوبجكتيف الاكزيال لوكاليزيشن اوف ذا هرنيتد ديسك ممكن يكون سنترال او باراميديان هاي الارياز مال كل ديسك السنترال قليل لانه البوستيريو لونجيتودينال ليجمنت صاير بالسنتر فالديسك عاده يروح يا اما للليفت يا اما للرايت اللي هو البارا سنترال اوكي وطبعا ورا البارا سنترال او البارا ميديان والفورامينال والاكسترا فورامينال نشوف هنا المثلا الفورامينال الديسك ماتيريال داخل بالاكزيت فورامين ذس اباوت ذس از اباوت 10% اوف ذا ديسك هيرنيشن مور سيمبتوماتيك ذان اذر ديسك هيرنيشن لانه الفورامين كلش صغير واقل ديسك ممكن يسوي كومبريشن على النيرف روت اند ابيد اوبليتريس ذا بيريورال فات اكسترا فورامينال هنا اتس ان كومن لوكيشن فور ديسك هيرنيشن What the clinicians want to know from us? Our clinicians should disk: Is it protrusion or extrusion? The protrusions common in the MRI imaging, the general population. We must not be symptomatic. Why we not take protrusions non-symptomatic or asymptomatic? The extrusion, يعني larger. Extruded disk or أكبر من protruded disk. زين. ف more likely to be associated with symptoms. We can استفاد من السيرجري. فلازم حد extrusion or protrusion. يعني مثلا نشوف هذا البيس اكثر من الديسك بالهايت بالاكزيال وبالساجيتال This is protrusion اجين هنا نشوف الهايت اكثر من البيس بالساجيتال بس بالاكزيال البيس اكثر يعني هذا يقول اكستروجن وهذا يقول بروتروجن لا اكستروجن اوكي okay? من تشوف فراجمنت سيكوستريتد منفصل عن الديسك الاصلي ورايح لغير ليفل السايز واللوكيشن والدايركشن والليفل كلها لازم نكتبها شكون هو الفراجمنتد سايد السيكوستريتد بارت السايز اوف ات ات ويش ليفل از ات يعني مثلا صاير على الال 4 على الال 5 رايح ابورد لو داون وورد كلها لازم نحكيها ونكتبها بالريبورت اوكي حتى يعرفون وين يفتحون مثلا هنا نشوف هذا الاكسترودد ديسك migrating upward al nil l45 level migrating upward to the level of l4 vertebral body okay if if you ask any surgeon should only treat me radiology pitch the most shagla he will like i want the radiologist to identify and describe the abnormalities and suggest their importance yeah it class we will say this is important or not how can we correlate clinically a larger disc extrusion إذا السبينال كانال كابيشيوس لارج حتى اللارج ديسك اكستروجن كونتين بالابيديورال فات ونوت انكروتشينج اون ذا فيكال ساك اور ذا نيرف روت ماي هاف ليتل سيمبتوماتولوجي يعني تلاقي اكستروجن هالكوبر بس الفيكال ساك وايد ما يسوي ذاك السيمبتومز او سيمبتومز قليله بس اذا تلاقي سمول فراجمنت و يعني يسوي افيسمنت اور ديسبيسمنت عن النيرف روت باللاترال ريسس، اللاترال ريسس سمول يسوي مور سيمبتومز، يعني السايز مو بس هو الكرايتيريا اللي يقرر هذا سيمبتوماتيك ولا لا، اللوكيشن همين باللاترال ريسس لو بالسنتر السباينال كانال كابيشيوس لارج لو سمول ذاك البارت، كلها ياثر على السيمبتومز. يعني مثلا نشوف هذه 42 يير اولد مان ليفت سايد سياتيكا الفراجمنتد ديسك ثاني نازل ديسك uh, يعني اكستروجن with downward migration اوكي okay. 
it appears to efface the nerve root. This fecal sac is big at this level, it's capacious. So the uh, symptoms are not as severe as what you expect. We don't have any nectar, last nectar. Aqua granulation tissue and disc herniation, no. Tube disc herniation, then there is something here. What's this? This is granulation tissue. You can see there is some soft tissue with signal intensity. It's a granulation tissue. If you give contrast, there is some post contrast enhancement here because it is granulation tissue. Okay? Again, you can see here this is the disc protrusion or extrusion or whatever, and over its soft tissue signal intensity. This is its granulation tissue. Give contrast, it will enhance. Again, this granulation. Iridonia are for surgeons. How much pressure is placed on the nerve root? Get who about the nerve root. They don't need good compression. We need to use it. Why? Overuse. Why? Because the nerves they are floating the fecal sac. Why? For the CSF. So deviated or stretched, more than compressed. Yeah, when you get this kind of stuff, it contracts or stretched more than it has been compressed. فتحاول تشوف النيرفوت وتشوف الامبيجمنت او الكومبريشن موجود خصوصا ويا السيمتومز وشو كورليت معناها من تشوف النيرف روت كومبريست باي ا ديسك ات ا سيرتن ليفل كورسبوندنج تو ذا كلينيكال بريزنتيشن ذير از ا ماتش هاير سكسسفول سيرجيكال اوت كوم ممكن يصير بهذا بهذا الديسك سبيسيفيك يعني تعرفت انه هذا البين نتيجه الكومبريشن مال هذا النيرف روت بهذا الليفل السيرجن بس يفوت يسوي فري للنيرف روت وخلص. اوكي؟ النيورال المنش يصير لها شنو الاشياء اللي ممكن اعلق عليها؟ افيست، ديسبليست او كومبرست. اوكي؟ هسه راح نشوف شنو الفرق بيناتهم. هذا الديسك وهذا النيرف روت، الاكزيت نيرف روت، هنا اتس نوت افكتد. اتس نورمال، يعني تشوف هنا النيرف روت مثل الرايت مثل الليفت، اتس نوت انفولف واكو ابيديورال فات ادجيسنت تو ات. من يكون هنا الديسك ان كونتاكت وذ ذا نيرف روت شوف هذا النيرف روت والديسك كونتاكت الفات ليتل بيت لوست بيتوين ذيم ها ات از ديفييتد دورسالي ديفييتد اجين النيرف روت الرايت اوكي النيرف روت الرايت سايد هنا ات از كونتاكت وذ ذا ديسك ماتيريال اند ات از افيست هنا الفات بدا يروح Sorry. Okay. Now this is a disc protrusion. It is compressing the nerve root compared with the normal side. This is the normal side. Now the exit nerve root compressed. How they cause symptomatic? How they look for one symptomatic? Thank you very much, Asif Ali Tala. But the topic is important. Inshallah, by the time, next time, at 10:00, we.